What up, what up, what up, what up? Um, now, I've, I've noticed a boom of incubators, um, accelerator programs, all kind of different programs to support um, entrepreneurs. But the rate of failure for entrepreneur has not gone down. As a matter of fact, it's still in a, a there's no data, unfortunately, but I, I highly uh, believe it's still on the 90 percentile. But why is that? With all the support system that uh, that exists in the ecosystem now, you know, companies are still failing, 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 and it still shows it, it shows that there is gaps in the ecosystem, huge gap. And that's what I want to talk about. What what are the gaps that is missing for those, you know, for this number to change? Check it out. What's going on, people? Listen, um, now I always say this is a great time, not the best, because the best is yet to come, but this is the great time to be an entrepreneur. Uh, there's a lot of tools, a lot of technology, a lot of support system, a lot of everything, you know, uh, to support and help entrepreneur. But, but there's still huge gaps. There's still a lot of uh, things missing, man, because I see incubator, accelerator program, all these support system, yet a lot of companies are still failing. They start, they get support, they get on their own and they fail. And that's what I want to talk about, man. Why, why are there still so many, you know, failures out there with all this support system? Uh, 10, 15 years ago, entrepreneur didn't get no support or any, any type of support. And, and the failure rate was really high. Today, we get all kind of programs to help entrepreneurs, and the failure rate is still high. And that does not make sense, to me at least. Because the goal of an accelerator program, all these incubators and all these mentorship programs that exist is to minimize the failure rate, maximize success. At least that's the way I look at it. Because uh, if that's not the case, well, what's the, what's the what's the plan of those programs, right? But I want to talk a little bit about why company is still failing. What's the gaps? Uh, what are the gaps that exist um, in the ecosystem? Because if we don't fill up the gaps, we're not going to change much, really. Uh, and uh, it, it's just not going to make any difference. Whatever other programs that comes in, it's not going to really put a dent on the failure rate. And the question now will become, are they useful? Do we really need those programs? So let me, let me, let me start with a few uh, uh, um, solutions or gaps that needs to be filled up. But first I want to talk about what's missing on the accelerator program. And I'll talk about it on other, other vlog guys. Um, the accelerator program not pushing the limit. They're really sticking to training. Uh, some some of them do document uh, documentation support, but they're not going the extra mile. They don't want to get involved uh, really deeply with the entrepreneur, and it becomes one of those uh, solu situations where it's just a a program to you know it's a numbers game. There's many companies that can come in. That's uh, that's that's the key. But do they measure the success and the failure rate? I don't think so. Do they really have a follow-up? A lot of them don't. So what's missing, man? So, the first thing missing is funding. I know, I know. It's always one of those things, but you can't run a business, especially in the technology space, if you don't have money to um, support yourself for a period of time until your business grows and get to a sustainable model. It's just not possible. And funding is the, is the biggest problem. If, if you provide support and you don't have money to pay for your staff, build your team, all this ingredient needed to grow your business, all you're getting is information that you can get somewhere else, but it's, 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 not, feeding, uh, um, it's not feeding the business. Like I said, it's like, growing, it's like growing a plant, man. You can talk to the plant all day long, 
But if, 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 you don't put the, if you don't put the plan into a, a rich environment, you know, uh, uh, with a rich soil and all those things, it's not going to make any difference. And that's what money is. You know, not everybody need or should have funding, but if you're in a tech space, if you plan to grow, et cetera, et cetera, you need funding. You need funding and innovation, product development, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, man. You can't grow an innovative business if you don't have funding, man. And if somebody telling you otherwise, they're lying to you. They are lying to you. So funding, funding is the biggest problem. And that needs to be really, really uh, uh, addressed because it's killing a lot of businesses, man. It's killing a lot of businesses. Another thing is taxes. Listen, that's a, that's an area where you can't really control. That's a government area. But somebody needs to address this issue. If taxes don't get fixed to promote SMEs and, and simplify tax and, and lower the punitive uh, uh, um, program taxes have, and, and especially the high taxes, I, I talk about it, you know. Labor laws are the same for an SME than a big company. It doesn't make any sense. And taxes is also a killer of entrepreneurship. High taxes and complicated tax program. It's a killer of uh, entrepreneurship. And if that is not fixed, I don't see the numbers going down as far as the failure rate. Because um, we design a tax law for big corporation and we use the same law for small or startups. It does not add up. Guys, expanding in, uh, in Africa is one of the most challenging things I've done. And um, without a proper process, or I would say a proper program, all the accelerated programs I see incubated, none of them talk about how to expand in Africa or, or have a structure or solution uh, or support system. Forget about solution, support system, yeah the support system to help companies expand outside the country of uh, operation where they start you know and 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 that that's that's a huge huge mistake because you have country like Rwanda that is small it's it's not possible to grow a big business when you start in Rwanda and and expansion is your only solution but there's no program for that now it's partially a role that government should take on government from different countries should support their SMEs but there should be a unified solution where you know you, you you have a support system to say hey you want to set up over there this is a, there's already a network you can tap in of what you need and all those things you know this is what you need to design this is what you need to know um, there's a lawyer this is the lawyer you need to talk to in that country all that saves you time man because business is about time saving also. If you're spending a whole year implementing, you can do that in two, three months. That's already money you're saving. You know, it's not just about spending money, it's also about saving money. So expansion plan programs, it's non-existent. You know, so you see companies that are stuck into a country, want to expand, lose a lot of money and fail. And that's also a huge problem. Now I talk about this quite a few times, man. merger acquisition. There's a lot of companies that are not really designed to be profitable immediately, but they have a very innovative uh, products or services uh, that has a huge business case potential that needs time and all those things. And sometimes businesses are meant to be sold or acquired. Uh, and, and that's just how it is. And they can use that technology to uh, the ecosystem of another big company. Uh, m and for SMEs and young innovators, MIA, meaning missing in action. There's not, most m and I talk to, they deal with big corporations, the process is so expensive, they don't want to deal with small companies in Africa. And I've yet to find an m and that really deal with SMEs, medium-sized companies, right? And m and that really can help you find uh, companies that are interested in your technology and all those things in developing countries that exist so if you want to sell your company you can do so you know yeah there's still a, 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 a period of time before you get there but there's a there's a, a, a process and there's an existing value chain for that 
in Africa there is not. So you develop a great tech, you have great uh, user case, people are using your solution, but the monetization will take you 10, 15 years. You don't have 10, 15 years, so you want to buy it, you want to sell your company, you want to look for companies that can utilize your technology and take it to the next level. You're not going to find it, at least not that I know of, and if you know any, please let me know. So, um, yeah man, M&A man, we, we need to really have that aspect solved into that ecosystem. Finally, access to market. Let's say you have a great product, fantastic uh, solution, very innovative, but now you need to find clients. And people, people tend to say in Africa we adopt technology pretty quickly. I disagree. Um, we still have a, 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 a very unique mind, you know, Mobile money took years before it got really adopted across Africa. And then when they did it, and I'm not even talking about on the consumer side, I'm talking about businesses, telecos. Telecos came later compared to Safaricom. You know, they wanted to see scalability first before they adopt. So this adoption of, of, of new tech or new solution or new services, it takes time. And, and sometimes that's a hurdle, man. We don't adopt innovation as quickly as we should, like, like the states, for example. In America where we look companies have a whole department looking for innovative ideas concept we don't have that here um, and we tend to do everything in-house meaning businesses tend to develop their own solution instead of looking for existing solution before they start developing their own so adopting uh, adoption to market is a, is, a, is a big challenge also and it requires lobbying it requires uh, you to have a uh, uh, if you're doing B2B, uh, uh, I would say a lobbying department, and there, there is no infrastructure to help you do so, right? And again, to, to, to do so on your own, you have to recruit some, some quality people that takes money and all those things. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle, right? And that's part of the business, and that's why so many companies uh, 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 fail. And if we don't address those key things, and I'm sure I'm missing some, but those are the key things I've seen personally what's missing on the ecosystem. Then all we're doing basically is just noise, man. We're just creating more noise, uh, selling this accelerator or incubator program or mentorship program, uh, like is the thing, yet it's not really doing anything. So I hope, you know, you're not going through that, and if you are, Make sure you have already put together some tools into that aspect to minimize your, your, your failure. If you don't, you can always try again. Take care and good luck.